Microphone check, one, two, what is this? It's the five foot seven assassin in the podcast business, and we're back with another episode of QLC TV. My name is Rohan, and I'm the host of this lovely show where I aim to give you authentic insight into the world of music, which will be a primary focus as it's my absolute utmost passion in the world. I just love music. I'll also be talking about politics, culture, sports as well as personal topics related to growing into adulthood. As all of this is delivered from the perspective of a 25-year-old Indian man living in Canada, trying to make sense of not only myself, but of the world. So all in all, I thank you so much for listening and taking part in this creative journey that I'm embarking on with QLC TV. And I just hope that this platform will not only give myself, but give those listening something nice to look forward to when they wake up in the morning because if i achieved that then i've succeeded thank you in advance for bearing with me when it comes to the audio quality and some of the editing Uh, as i've explained throughout uh, the first four episodes i didn't want to let not having a proper mic and all of the editing skills come in the way of actually starting this thing so thank you for bearing with me and note that from episode five moving forward I have a good mic, so all of the audio quality should be consistent from there on. So thank you again, and enjoy the show. And today I want to talk about this new Kanye West record. Originally, I wanted to talk about and give my top 20, top 25 albums of the mid-year, and I still will do that, but... Today I wanted to talk about this new Kanye West song called Wash Us in the Blood with Travis Scott. Because I think it definitely highlights just and perfectly captures, I think, what makes Kanye Kanye. I find his music and everything he does never exists in a vacuum. So what I mean by that is if we are aliens come down on Earth and kill us and they have no idea, understanding of our culture or any of our history, and they just pick up a Kanye West uh, album and they put it on, I, again, this is a stupid analogy, but I'll just go along with it, that let's say they still can appreciate music in general. Yeah, they'll they'll find the music to be good. They'll even understand some of it. But I find Kanye West, unlike many other rappers I can think of, and any other artist in general, is that his music is, is supplemented and almost demands that you also follow his life, or at least follow pop culture to a certain extent. And a perfect example of this is My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, which is one of my favorite albums ever. Uh, Universally acclaimed as his best work, some of the best, one of the best rap albums and albums, period, in music. It's an amazing record, and it's definitely an album that I feel, if you don't come away with it come away from it feeling that it's so special or really that great i feel like a large part of that reasoning is that you just don't care about kanye or you don't follow his life or don't follow pop culture at all and that's totally fine obviously that is a key point to make when we want to have the right context to talk about this new track Wash Us in the Blood, because musically as a song, stripping away the context and who made the song, take the lyrics and you take the beat and you just listen to it, just the most basic level to look at the song, it's a pretty good song. I'd say, you know, solid track, beat is menacing, the the siren-like sounds in the background is a really great touch, just kind of gives that chaotic, urgent feeling like something needs to happen, something's happening. It really captures that uh, captures that messaging beautifully. Rapping wise, I like the energy. It's very Yeezus like in that it's pretty simplistic lyrically, but it's it's a lot of energy, a lot of uh, passion in it, and I and I think that comes off really well. 
Uh, I even think Travis's three seconds on the song actually has a nice little dynamic change of pace briefly, and he adds a few lines about uh, the hypocrisy of having a death penalty in 30 states, yet God, and this is supposed God's country, because the album is supposedly called God's country, it's a hypocrisy that in God's country there's 30 states that kill, and in the Bible, thou shall not kill is a uh, is a tenant of the bible and of christianity and all that so then you get to the lyrics for kanye especially in that last verse it's cool like lyrically it's fine like it's passable but this is not kanye's best work and i've said time and time again uh that he is just he just can't do it anymore i'm just gonna be honest like he cannot rap as well as he could before i think it's a a function of his attention to detail and his musical process is so different now it's not so different but it's definitely changed uh meaning that he's a lot more spur of the moment he he values kind of being more raw being more uh one take or unrefined that way versus his other music was much more in the realm of being a perfectionist to making sure every every t is crossed, every I is dotted, that kind of thing. For example, in graduation era, Kanye famously had almost 50 different mixes of uh, the track Stronger, specifically with different drum sections and drum uh, and drum fills. Like Dr. Dre came in to do some drums, Timbaland came in to do some drums. You could really see the level of detail and uh, perfection that he had in his earlier music that he does not bring to the same level in his current music and for him i feel like that his rapping and his lyricism suffers the most from that uh for that approach because i will always say that kanye is a good to great lyricist like he always had a certain personality and trademark style and uh, ability to convey emotions into his lyrics and and personability that I find has always been very special and unique. Uh, But that being said, he's never been an all-star lyricist, so he needs more time to work on those, and without that, it just suffers. And on this Wash Us in the Blood track, it's it's definitely the, the key reason why it's not something that I'd say is great, because if he had old Kanye rapping ability and level of lyrical quality, this song would be a a potential classic because it really bangs, honestly. So yeah, in a vacuum, this song is pretty good. Overall, not really expecting anything. It doesn't change my overall expectation that Kanye is going to all of a sudden drop an amazing album. I don't think he has it in him for many different reasons, but still... I believe the song is elevated and demands to be appreciated alongside the greater context of our current time and the corona pandemic and all the Black Lives Matter movement that has uh, taken place recently. And again, keeping in mind the messenger in this case being Kanye West and his very confusing views. And therefore that brings us to this video that encapsulates that perfectly. And holy, holy fuck. That video, first first time I watched it, second time I watched it, I was just so thrown off, so but so captivated at the same time. It's just like a like an accident that you just can't look away from. So as I continue to watch the video multiple times, I really started to pick up on small things that both confused me and just made me very intrigued as to understand what these little bits of symbolism actually meant. And you see that the, the 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 basic theme I think is is relatively simple to understand is basically he's calling out for Jesus to come wash away everybody's sins in blood, and uh, and basically the video is just showing all these different forms of black death, black culture. I think some are positive, but most are very negative. Uh, you see highlights from some police uh, uh, clips that highlight police brutality Ahmaud Arbery's uh fateful shooting his his video is uh, there's a clip of it barely on there too it's it's jarring and I and I think my initial confusion and just pure shock when I 
first saw the video is part of the point. And you know, one thing I've been pretty into over the past few years is those music reaction videos on YouTube. I love them. I just love seeing seeing people's raw first reactions to a piece of music, whether I love it or hate it. It's just really interesting to me. I just get really fascinated by it. And in watching the reactions to both the song and especially the music video, it really made it clear to me just how I feel about Kanye as an artist and how I feel about this song and this video in general. Because I kept hearing the same sort of thing uh, from all the different reactors. They all seem to say something along the lines of this. You know, there's just so many things going on. I'm trying to focus on the song, uh, but there's just five di billion different things happening at the same time in this video. It's so disorienting. It's so hard to keep up. It's so hard to keep track of what's going on. And I think it perfectly captures just kind of how people consume media and consume what's happening these days. There's just so many different f channels that uh, to push information and push trauma and, and culture and, and, and current events in your face to where it's just an overwhelming blitz of all oh, this, this shooting happened. This, this uh, injustice is happening. This atrocity just happened in the Middle East. This happened here. This happened there. It's just nonstop, all in your face at all times. It's, it's, it's incredibly difficult to keep up with. It's incredibly hard to focus on one thing because you're just getting, just getting blitzed. You're just getting overwhelmed. And I think that's what the video captures just in a primal sense perfectly. It's hard to keep up with any given clip trying to hard to even make sense of what how i should think about the video what should what should the theme what is the message is trying to give off because i can't keep up and i think that's a a metaphor for just how it's hard to really understand what to do in the world how it's hard to understand how to formulate an opinion and understand what's happening in the world because there's just so many things happening over and over again all at once and it's overwhelming so I think as a video, it, it operates really well in communicating that kind of high level messaging overall. And, and I think it's, it's fantastic. And as the more I've watched it, the more I just realized like this is just an amazing video because of just how, how gritty it is, how, how, it, how effectively it captures that feeling and how it fits so nicely with the lyrics where it's just and the, and the siren again that siren wailing in the background of the of the beat it just is so apocalyptic it's just you just watch it and you just can't help but feel wow we are in need of help i mean i'm not religious but it fits in with what kanye believes in we need god and and it makes perfect sense and so that leads me to my final kind of overall point and where I say this really captured what I think Kanye does so well and what he means to music in general and culture in general is that, man, he knows how to spur a conversation. He's a lightning rod of culture, whether you like him or not. He released this video and instantly I just have a billion different things going on in my mind of what was he going for? What was the intention? What does this video mean? What is the song mean where is he gonna go with his music uh is what he's saying even something that is 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 correct or, or right um because like i mentioned earlier kanye's music and everything he does never exist it, it's not properly understood by just listening to it in a vacuum and part of what again makes the li watching this video listening to this song all of that the whole package so interesting and fascinating to me as a consumer, is that I'm also just trying to figure out what the fuck is Kanye doing? What's his what's his angle? Because as much as I respect him as a musician, as a visionary, as a creator, he's said he's said a bunch of horrible things. I still believe he's a very I think he's just very delusional right now, very ignorant, caught up in his materialistic lifestyle. And his latest thing to kind of make him feel whole again is 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 being a born again christian and he's trying to derive meaning and try to make sense of this world through that lens and i mean i hope he can feel good and all that stuff but his actions and his behaviors and some of his ideologies i don't think are good i do think he's one of those people that it seems to 
project his 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 drive, his ambition, his ability to 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 kind of mow through, uh, drive through hate, drive through adversity. That's a great great trait of his, but it's not. It's he's in the one percent of that, and that's okay. If and that's and that's and it's okay if you're not like Kanye, and you don't have that ability. And then the second part of that is that I think Kanye also believes that a lot of his success or all of his success is it comes from that drive, comes from that ambition, comes from that overall talent of his. And I think that's a very conservative way of thinking. And and I think it's what leads him to say things that I don't think he means it in a bad intention, but that whole slavery comments, it's part of that same way of thinking where it's like oh people just need to kind of overcome their uh their uh their situations they kind of just gotta release the mental shackles and things like that and 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 overall there's there's a grain of truth in all of that all of us could do a better job in 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 uh, taking being more personally responsible but he conflates personal responsibility with neglecting all of the systemic issues that severely disadvantaged black people, people of color, and just poor people in general. And what makes Kanye very fascinating, going back to it's all part of the same conversation, is that he doesn't just think that. He's not just an idiot who thinks that, or an ignorant person who thinks that. He also has simultaneously a a level of understanding of the systemic issues that afflict black people and other marginalized people in the world. So he kind of carries both those things at the same time. He's a walking paradox in so many different ways. And in his line of way of thinking, it's it's one of them. So that makes the music and the product that he creates m- even more fascinating to me. Because I, re- I see this video and I see some people online and like I get it. But I don't really know if they fully understand who Kanye is. Where when they say things like, oh, Kanye's back. He's out of that MAGA stuff. Now he's back to being pro-black and being woke and all this and that. I'm like, he is not necessarily someone that we need to, we necessarily have to, or should be believing exactly what he's saying in the way that we don't know what his angle is. This is a person that loves the attention. This is a person that has said things that are incredibly contradictory, or at the very least paint a, a more complex image of what he believes. So... I don't necessarily know if this video is trying to say, oh, you know, the systemic uh, uh, conditions that are inflicted upon black people are what causing them in the chorus to be uh, no choice to sell drugs, mass incarceration is what it does, slavery is what it does, genocide is what it does. Like, my gut feeling is that he does believe that the system and the conditions have created this, but I don't think that's just what he says because I am trying to be trying to analyze this understanding what Kanye's other actions have been and how who he is who he surrounds himself with who he aspires to be too. people like Steve Jobs Walt Disney like I just don't think that's necessarily exactly what he's saying I think there's a lot of like if I put my own views and analyze them and see how he he connects I think this video connects with a lot of what I feel but I don't think it's fully I think there's probably some other angles to the imagery or the symbolism and the overall message of this video that I may not agree with. But that's, again, the magic of Kanye West. I've talked about one song for, how long has this been? Almost 20 minutes. And it's just, it starts a, sparks a conversation. It, it makes you feel something, whether it's hate or confusion or anger or, or passion. He makes you feel something. And for me... Uh, a lot, a lot of times he he was especially when I was younger had a lot less self confidence. Kanye was as he put it in an interview, which I think he put perfectly. He was that shot of espresso in the morning to get me going, to get me feels feel like I'm a king, feel like I can do something. And I think he has that effect. And I think as he's progressed in his career, the way I see his trajectory and where he's going, I still don't like it overall. I I, I he's not a person that I think I would agree with on a lot of ideas but I think at his core I always felt I understood him I understood his in his his way of thinking even if I didn't agree with it 
I related to his insecurity, I related to his childishness, his immaturity that he shows has shown throughout his life. And it just makes me interested and makes me care. Maybe not care in the same way that I would care about in a loving way. It just makes me fascinated and makes me in a way I always and I still will. I'll still root for him. I'll still hope that this album is great. I still hope that he finds his way away from this Trump supporting delusional conservative I love Candace Owens she I love the way she thinks kind of attitude I hope he gets away from that but I don't really necessarily have hope that he will all of it is to say is that I just he gives you a lot to talk about and when it comes to culture and art that's a that's a powerful thing and I think if you treat his music and anything is created and you kind of are able to analyze how it fits in with what he was going through in his life, what the pop culture landscape is. It 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 it's just it adds another level of it adds another level of importance or for lack of a better word or just adds a level another level of appreciation for me. I guess I can say that. Take 808s and Heartbreak as a perfect example. And I'm not saying people do this, but if you listen to that album and don't check when it came out, You'll think, okay, this is an interesting album, a lot of auto-tune usage, okay, cool. A lot of atmospheric production, kind of pseudo-rapping mixed in here and there. Okay, it's an interesting listen. Okay, I guess he's one of those atmospheric rap crooner kind of people. Like Lil Uzi Vert or Drake or Travis Scott. That's what you'd say if you listened to this in 2020. But if you went and checked the, li- the year and say, oh, this is 2008, it adds a different level of, like, holy shit. He made this in 2008. Okay, what was music like back then? Then it leads you to the questions like, what was he going for? How did he think of this sound? Okay, he must have got it from T-Pain, but like the synthetic production and all this, like how did he, how did he mix that in with the, the, the melancholy sound? Like, did he get that from like, did, it must have been coming from Cuddy. It, it, it adds a different conversation now. Now you're talking about kind of, What's behind the music? It helps you get into Kanye's mind. Where was he going with this? How was he creating this? And again, it just makes the discussion, the conversation around his music, his art more interesting. And I think Kanye, I think his music is best consumed that way, in my opinion. Then you take into account the fact that his mom passed away and he just broke up with his fiance uh, in advance of recording this album. It, 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 contextualizes all of the heartbreak and the sorrow that he's expressing on that project. Uh, so, 808s and Heartbreak's perfect example. I've already quickly mentioned Dark Twisted Fantasy and also Graduation uh, from the simple fact that that was a real triumphant moment for Kanye. Littered throughout the project, it's filled with mentions of celebration of the fact that he's arrived, look at all what he's accomplished. What would appear as more vapid, surface-level braggadocio from Kanye uh, looks a little different in the light once you have the bigger picture in mind. And that's further contextualized if you do, if you are aware of the fact that he came up from Jay-Z's shadow as a, a nobody artist that no one wanted to hear raps from uh, to where he is now where he's winning a sales battle with 50 Cent, which was highly publicized, where he sold over 900,000 copies of his album in the first week. You also see that there's only one uh, rapping feature on the project, which, which again is a pretty important factor to mention because he famously said on his uh, final track of College Dropout that uh, the record execs thought, okay, if his album sucks, let's just throw on a bunch of features from Talib Kweli and Jay-Z uh, and Freeway, some other big artists at the time, uh, to save the album. But here he is holding his own on an entire full-length project selling this much uh, albums, this many albums, it meant something, and it means something more if you actually have all of that context in mind. To cap off this conversation, I'm really excited to hear God's Country. I wasn't nearly as much, I no, I wasn't nearly, I was not trying to listen to another Kanye album. Jesus King, you know, a solid six, Still, Kanye can fucking work with some his, his team and create a, an amazing vocal arrangement. Still can make a melodically catchy song. But his rapping is just so... Leaves so much to be desired right now. His subject matter on that album was just 
I love God. I follow him. I love Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is my savior. And again, I am not religious, but even if I was, I just don't know what he's saying. That's all that interesting. There's no angle on what religious, what his religion made him feel in any kind of depth that matters to me. So had no reason to really be excited. And again, I didn't want him to Re- release another album i want him to just stop making music honestly because he's ruining his discography i don't think the world needs another kanye west album that's in that kind of vein i was just thinking that he should focus on his mental health and his family that's where i was standing two weeks ago but then this song comes out i hear that he's working with dr dre Dr. Dre's mixing another version of Jesus King, and I think he may actually be working on the, another project, this next project, God's Country with Dr. Dre. Uh, I watched Joe Budding podcast. He said he talked to someone that he respects his music opinion of, and he said that this is one of the this is one of the best things he's ever heard. So again, that's just some 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 thing that someone said, unnamed source. But I just have a different feeling about this this project after I've heard this song. That this. I feel like at its best can be, will be a, and I, people are saying it's a mix between Jesus and Jesus King. Like, I think on the surface level, yes, it's more noisy, it's more aggressive production, but it's not that noisy, really, somewhat, but not that much. He's still on, very much on his religious themes, so I do see that the subject matter will be around that, so I get that comparison to Jesus King, but I don't know, it's really a toss-up. That would that song would not fit on Yeezus like I feel like people are saying it would. It would feel out of place because it's just significantly more trappy and straightforward compared to the other songs. He may do what he did with Dark Twisted Fantasy where he kind of pulls the different elements of his previous work and then combines it into something new. I hope that's what he does. I just hope that lyrically, man, he steps it up, but I have no reason to believe he will, but... I hope he does, because Yeezus has grown on me a ton, has become an album that I think is actually genuinely great. That Rowview rating scale I got, it's about an 8 to an 8.5. Lyrically, very juvenile at times, but on the flip side of that, there are some good lyrical moments, some good interesting subject matter. Uh, and then the aggression and the delivery and the passion and the energy, all of that is very great and and fits really nicely with the noisy production in overall the production is 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 fantastic for the most part i definitely like the mix of of trap industrial noise and kind of like the auto-tune stuff he did i like the way it sounded It, it still sounds great so i really like that album but again the lyrics is what turned that held that back from being a classic and being a true contender for one of Kanye's best albums. And I have a feeling, if I had to put a guess, my prediction is this album's going to be better than Jesus King, will be kind of a more watered watered down, less ambitious, but more scatterbrained and confusing version of Jesus with lyrics, lyricism that deals on religious themes, trying to find salvation, trying to atone for his sins which I think could be interesting if he does it with depth, but I don't really imagine he will. And I think lyrically, from like a rapping standpoint, it's not going to be up to par. So that's where I stand. If he delivers that, I'm going to obviously hope that it isn't that and it's better, but that's that's where I stand. That's where I think it'll be. But overall, I am happy that it seems like Kanye has something to say or he has a purpose again. Now, at the time of me editing this episode, it's July 24th, and a lot has changed uh, since this song originally came out and I recorded this episode. So, uh, overall, my, my thoughts on the video and the song are pretty much the same, but when it comes to like what I think this new album will be and where I thought Kanye was going, that has changed. Because it's really clear that, obviously, I knew and most of us should have been aware that he's definitely struggling with his bipolar syndrome right now but this is on another level uh i i still can't get that picture out of my head from his campaign rally where 
yes, people are focusing on the Harriet Tubman comment, and overall, obviously ignorant, obviously incorrect, she did free the slaves. That is just a verifiable fact. Maybe where he is going with it was that it was a kind of thing where, yes, they were freed from indentured servitude, but they ended up going into a new kind of slavery and the new Jim Crow, um, basically making the point that there's other ways that black people uh, have been enslaved by the uh, white, supremacist, white supremacist institutions in uh, the United States, which I think there's totally a lot to, to go into there and a lot of validity in that. But I, I just, you, you can't say something that irresponsible without any context. And it's, again, what he literally said is incorrect. Like, I can assume all I want about his intentions, but that's just the fact of the matter. So people are focusing on the Harriet Tubman comment, but the one that really alarmed me was when he was talking about abortion. And it's not about his view on abortion. Like, I don't agree with him. I think abortion is, uh, should be fully legal, and that's, it's, it, that's where it ends. But his, the, the way he was manically crying with that high-pitched voice about how he almost, Kim, supposedly contemplated an abortion with their firstborn, Northwest, and how he just kept screaming out, they, I almost killed my daughter, I almost killed my daughter. He's in so much pain. His face, it, it's just, it, it was a lot to, to, to see. And I, I originally was excited for this album, uh, but it seems like, but after reading this Forbes interview that he, uh, that he took part in recently, a lot of that MAGA stuff that we heard him previously and what a lot of people were saying he was off of completely and I had my doubts. It seems like he's off of Trump because of the dumbest reasons. I, I still think all of the delusions and even more so now the conservative values of like being anti-abortion and things like that are, are, are even are, are strong now. So, yeah, I... I it's it, it's clear that he's not doing well. It's clear that his delusions are at an all-time high, it seems. And I just, I can't feel anything other than hoping that he does well. And I don't really, I'll obviously listen to an album if it comes out. But I, I, I don't want him to focus his time on that. I really hope, again, he just focuses on getting well. And... I, I can't speak on what the family, the Kardashian family, is actually doing, but I just have very cynical feelings that they're 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 loving this. This is driving their ratings for their show and all funneling all the attention and money into their their usual ventures, and it makes me sick. Uh, I hope I just hope that all the yes men around him, whether it be uh, potentially members of his family or his different business partners, uh, I, I just hope they, they, they take his health and put it above their profits and just really work with him as much as they can to, to stop enabling this behavior and get him help. And I find it interesting also looking at the discourse that I've seen online has focused on the fact that people's primary impulse when it comes to this Kanye situation has been to try to make sure people understand that, oh, he needs help. He's just going through a mental episode. Let's not cancel him. And that double standard that we've shown uh, towards him versus other female people in these situations like Azealia Banks shows that it's largely due to our sexist society. And uh, with Azealia Banks, people are quick to call her crazy, call her uh, call her names, vilify her. I would say that what Azealia Banks, some of the stuff she's done, I, has been more aggressively hurtful and direct in its hurt versus just being a bad influence on people and saying bad views. Like she's actually done some things. But that being said, it's true because she also has bipolar disorder. People were quick to get on her and are, are a little quicker to defend Kanye. However, we do have to look at the context of who these artists actually are. Azealia Banks and Kanye West are not in the same world when it comes to their contributions to the music industry and the fandom that their artistry has garnered. Like Kanye has massive stands all across the world. 
because this is music and his product has been so amazing. So it's not just because he's a man that he's getting this defense. People just love to defend their, their favorite hero. You know, that's as simple as that. Uh, and then the other thing is that I, I just, I, I do question the people who make this argument. Like, you can make the point that there's a clear double standard here, and I just acknowledge that I believe it is true, and it is largely because he's a man. I think people, when they make this point, I don't really see the other side that they're trying to make. It just seems like people are trying to pile on. Like, they're saying, oh, you didn't do this, show the same energy and the same love and care for Azealia Banks. Uh, fuck Kanye. That's, like, what I see. I don't really see, like, an actual understanding or empathy that they're supposedly saying was missing for Azealia Banks given to Kanye but then also added on the point that there's a double standard with Azealia Banks it just seems like people are just saying hey you didn't show Azealia Banks this love a black woman so fuck Kanye and it's just like okay then what is your point like it seems like you're just making a valid point and then because that people aren't treating this other person with the right level of respect and understanding of their mental illness, we're just gonna pile on to Kanye. It just seems like you're you're a walking contradiction in that point. And I, I don't know what drives that, other than I know Kanye has caused a lot of hurt in the the black community and just in uh, the world. Anybody that's followed him, he said a lot of things that have been either confusing or just downright ignorant and hurtful. And I'm one of those people that are, are very unhappy with a lot of things that he's done. But I'm not directly hurt by any of the views he's, he's ever espoused. So I'm really just an outsider when it comes to this. So I'm in no way trying to actually uh, mandate how anybody feels or trying to criticize it. Because I don't really understand. So I'm not asking people to have different uh, different opinions on what he's done. I just... I guess I'm just asking the question and trying to understand and how, how do we deal with someone who deserves to be held accountable for the, the wrong things they've done while also acknowledging that they are not in the state where they can be criticized or given the same energy as someone who's fully mentally stable and uh, in their right senses. So. I think it's a really interesting discussion, but I think overall it's just really sad, and, and I don't blame anybody who just never wants to hear from Kanye again, and I would actually think that's probably the best thing to do is to just ignore him or uh, always uh, encourage him in any way you can to get help, and otherwise just let it be and focus on other important things that are going on in the world that have nothing to do with Kanye West. It's overall just a really sad story and I, I hope once again I hope for the best that he stops creating things stops creating music stops any kind of his fashion ventures I just want him to get help because no matter what I'm always rooting for him he has contributed a lot of good to my life and I, I don't wish ill on this man so that concludes what I wanted to talk about in today's episode thank you everybody for listening I really appreciate the support. I love doing this, and I can't wait to continue doing more of these episodes of QLC TV moving forward. If you want to follow me, support the podcast, please subscribe on all the podcast channels that you use, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and so on. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Rowview, so that's R-O-H-V-I-E-W, and shoot me a comment, send me a DM, and feel free to suggest whatever topic you think I should cover, whether it be some political discussion, music, etc. Or if you just wanted to send me some feedback about something that you think I should improve on or consider changing as it relates to the show, I'm definitely all ears. I wanted to start this podcast to, to help myself grow, help myself uh, express myself more efficiently, more concisely, more effectively. So I'm always open to anything that I should improve on, whether it be about how I deliver the show, or just to criticize some horrible take that I had. I'm all ears. And I'd like to extend an open invitation to anybody who's listening right now who would like to join me in a discussion on any topic of your liking. Just shoot me a DM, post a comment, and I would love to do that.
because I want to connect with you guys who are listening as much as I can and foster a community. So thank you once again for listening. Peace.